taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Darya Nikolaevna Saltykova Darya Saltykova was a Russian countess who was born on March the 11, 1730. Over a significant period of years she turned from an elegant noblewoman, into a vicious serial killer. Her maiden name was Daria Ivanova and her family members were reasonably well connected with other noble families. When she was young, Daria was married to Gleb Saltykov. Unfortunately she was also widowed young, by the age of 26 in fact. Somewhat less unfortunately, she also became the wealthiest widow in Moscow. Due to her husband's death, Daria had inherited a beautiful estate near Moscow called Troisku. The wealthy widow decided to live at the property with her two young sons, Theodore and Nicholas. They also had an entourage of over 600 servants. During the time she was married, no one had noticed anything special about Daria Saltykova, she was neither too relaxed, nor too hasty. The only thing those around her noticed was that she seemed gloomy most of the time, and had a rather pessimistic outlook. She also happened to be a very pious woman, taking her religion very seriously, due to which she donated a considerable amount to churches and monasteries. After being on her own for a while, Darya Saltykova met a young and very handsome man, Nikolaevichev. Instantly she was smitten by his charm. He was everything she had ever wished for. As she was getting older and was very lonely, the affair with him had raised her spirits a little bit. It was just a shame that like all good things, it wouldn't last very long. She soon learned that Nikolay was also having a love affair with a young girl, and even worse, they were secretly married in a church. The countess was furious and her heart burned with rage. She was the epitome of a woman scorned. In a blind fury, Darya Saltykova tried to kill her philandering lover. Nikolay Dyachev and his young wife thankfully escaped the countess's grasp, and fled to a relative's estate in Moscow. They then continued their journey and fled from the region. Out for revenge and driven by bloodlust, Countess Saltykova wanted to kill them, though this time, the opportunity was lost. It was at this point in her life that she started wreaking havoc and exposing her serfs to her anger. The bitterness in her character permeated through her skin, she was full of vileness and vitriol. The main targets, as could have possibly been guessed, were women, although she hated everyone equally except for the young. The younger they were, the more she despised and wanted to hurt them. This was likely because they represented the young woman her lover had eloped with. The true extent of her cruelty and mania is hard to fathom. She would torture children and pregnant women to death by beating them. Sometimes she would break their bones and throw them out of the house, naked into the frost. Other times she would pour boiling water over their bodies, or numerous other vicious and bloody tortures. Although Countess Saltykova didn't make a habit of killing men, she would still torture them in a different way, psychologically. She killed the people that they loved, torturing their minds. One of her serfs personally lost three of his wives to the Countess, one by one. His pain must have been overwhelming. It could be thought that she wanted to transpose her feelings of pain and loss onto her subjects. Either way you look at it though, Daria Saltykova was evil incarnate. The Countess would also become furious for no apparent reason, always on the cusp of a murderous episode. Early on in her madness, she would throw logs at her servant girls for minor infractions. Then, as time went on, she would become even more volatile. Eventually her sadistic streak reached the point that she would, beat, whip, and torture young girls and women to death. Daria Saltykova was a sadist in every sense of the word, she enjoyed physically abusing her servants until their demise. There was no reasoning or method, she tortured the people purely for pleasure. As with many crimes of the rich and powerful, early complaints to authorities about the deaths on the Saltykova estate were either ignored, or resulted in the punishment of the complainants. 
Countess Daria Saltykova was well connected in Moscow society and she knew powerful members of the royal court personally. All mentions of murder at her hand, were hushed up and dealt with silently. In the summer of 1762, two peasant serfs, one of them being the man who had three of his wives beaten to death by Saltykova, fled from the estate to St. Petersburg. Here they eventually brought a petition before Empress Catherine the Great. Catherine ordered an investigation immediately, regarding the accusations of torture and murder at the Saltykova estate. When the investigation came back with evidence of wrongdoing at Countess Saltykova's hands, Catherine decided to try her in public. In 1762 Daria Saltykova was arrested. She was then held for six years while the authorities conducted a thorough investigation into what had been happening on her Moscow estate. Many of the surviving victims and witnesses refused to come forward, they were still too afraid to give evidence, fearing that she still had influence from her jail cell. There was no doubt that if she would turn free, she would seek her revenge on those who had spoken against her. During her time in prison, Daria Saltykova was never diagnosed as mad or ill. She was also completely unapologetic for her heinous actions. Even the priest whose mission it was to make her confess to her killings, failed to make her talk. She was absolutely sure she would escape punishment and would admit to nothing. According to court investigators, Countess Daria Saltykova, over the period of six to seven years, murdered 139 people by various methods, including torture. Of these victims, the majority were young women, including girls of just 10 to 12 years old. She only took the lives of three men during her reign of terror. Daria Saltykova was eventually found guilty of having killed 38 female servants by beating and torturing them to death. On the 2nd of October 1768, a sentence of life imprisonment in the Ivanovsky cloister was handed down to Saltykova. This was to be preceded by a civil execution ceremony in Red Square, Moscow. At a public beating in the square, she was chained on a platform for an hour in front of the crowd. A sign around her neck was adorned with a text, This woman has tortured and murdered. She was then hauled off to live out her remaining years in the basement of a convent. Her sentence required her to be incarcerated in a monastery dungeon in chains and in darkness. A windowless wooden room was built for her, so that she lived in complete darkness. She was also under 24-hour guard. As a small mercy, a nun would bring food and a candle each day, and after the meal, the candle would be removed from her cell. In the completely dark solitary cell, Daria Saltykova turned her back on the world for 11 long years. In 1779, she was transferred to one of the monastery buildings. This room contained a window with shutters. One of her fellow inmates recorded her conduct while she was incarcerated there. Supposedly, Daria Saltykova would spit at curious spectators who would come to gawk or she would regale them with obscenities and shove a dirty stick at them through the window. By this point in proceedings, she had completely lost her sanity. Whether her mental illness was a result of her solitary confinement, or was merely aggravated by it is unclear. Darya Nikolaevna Saltykova, died in her cell on November 27, 1801. This was at the age of 71. 33 of those years were spent in isolated incarceration.